Shockey, the freshman from Chino Hills, California. Flashes the bunt. This is outside from Zabala. Zabala, the sophomore from Miami, leads the ACC with nine wins so far this season. Catches the outside part of the plate, making it a one and one count to Shockey. Well, with the number of left-handed hitters and slappers that Arizona has in their lineup, the left-hand side of Louisville's defense is going to have some work cut out for them today. Look for Daisy Hess at shortstop to have a lot of ground to cover. She covers it well, but one thing about Reagan Shockey is she uses the ground to her advantage every chance she gets. You probably see a, a big vertical plane for her and her bat path. It's, it's Arizona of old. I told Coach Lowe earlier, I'm like, she looks like you. She just, she's so, <laughs> so good as a freshman. Pretty high praise for sure for the freshman. Shockey bringing in a 458 average. Chopped foul. That'll load the count full. Well, offensively, Arizona has just been so good to start the year. They're 14th nationally in average, 13th nationally in walks. So they don't have to put the ball in play. They feel like they can work counts, and, and they have a lot of dynamic hitters to be able to complement the speed that's in their lineup. Payoff pitch is swung on and missed, and that's a strikeout, a big strikeout for Zabala to get this game going. Excellent strikeout for Zabala, and that's going to be really the key. If you can keep them off the bases, right, make them hit your pitch, make your defense work a little bit, but a great start for her this year, this game. Now it's Jasmine Perez Chica, the senior from La Quinta, California. Also looking to flash that bunt, pulls it back. Ball misses high and outside from Zabala. A new spot in the order for Paris Chica. She hasn't hit above seventh yet this year. So coming in the two spot today, a little little new opportunity for her. She is what you would call the old school slapper. She's going to be very much you know, a traditionalist, use the short game, soft slap, power slap. You're not going to see her swing. Definitely looking to use the ground here, give herself a chance. And you know, with a 556 on base percentage, no wonder you move her up to the top of the order. Not too shabby. <laughs> Fouls right. that second pitch off. It's one and one to Paris Chica. Just missing on the outside part of the plate. Behind the dish catching Zabala is Kylie Goff. Looking at the rest of the Louisville defense. You mentioned that left-hand side, Bailey Richardson at third, Daisy Hess at short. Allie Alexander at second, Riley Frizzell at first base for the cards. Another foul ball there, evens up the count two and two in the outfield, left to right for the cards. Paige Garrity, Chelsea Mack, and Vanessa Miller. The two and two to Paris Chica misses high and outside. And another full count. Zabala, who's really known for using the top half of the zone, challenging these Arizona hitters, she wants to keep them on her plane. Going deep in the count with both to start here. Another foul ball dangerously into the dugout of the home team Cardinals. Looks like everybody popped back up. Everybody seemed to be okay. Probably just thinking maybe they should stay down there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And another payoff pitch to Paris Chica. Swung on up to that left-hand side. Richardson over to Frizzell for out number two. A good job there defensively from this Louisville squad. You can have a lot of pressure on you. You feel the base runner bearing down on first and you're moving quick, so making sure you take care of the ball first. Good job on that one from Richardson. Now with two outs, that'll make way for Dakota Kennedy. Kennedy, the sophomore from Sacramento, California. Named to the 
Pac-12 all-freshman team last year. After she led Arizona with a 394 batting average, 28 hits and eight home runs during Pac-12 play. Pretty outstanding as a freshman. Absolutely, and you know, speaking of comparisons, talking to Coach Lowe on Tuesday, her comparison for Dakota Kennedy was Jessica Mendoza. How's that? How's Ooh. that for pressure, yes, right? Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, she said she's got that sneaky little drag bunt, but she can just mash. Catches outside part of the plate, two and one. Now the count to Kennedy. Just missing on the outside part of the plate, much to some Louisville fans' chagrin. Well, and Zabala really making it a point to work that half of the plate. Whatever their scouting report is, is we're going to keep it outside on these lefties. She has not really come in much, hasn't changed speeds a whole lot either. Goes there inside go. there. <laughs> right on cue, Joanna. That's right. Well, and you have to, right? You look at the the skill level of today's hitters, let alone on a team like Arizona and, and offensively, you've got to be able to keep them off balance, even if it's a pitch that is your pitch, which that ball isn't going to be really hard to hit fair, but changing the plane of the vision, changing how they see the velocity sets up this one. The payoff pitch swung on, sent up the middle. Zabala makes the backhand grab, gets the put out over at first base and three quick outs for the cards. We're going to go to the bottom of the first. Cards coming to the dish after this. We're going to talk a lot about the Alley Skaggs homecoming, but it's a little bit of a homecoming for Miranda Stoddard through three seasons for Kentucky, where she was a teammate um, of sorts to Chelsea Mack. Did take a year off, but know each other through the recruiting process. And it's been a great return to college softball for Miranda Stoddard. Little chopper to the left-hand side. Behringer to scoop in for the first out. You know, for Stoddard, she, did, she didn't pitch for a year, took that year off, graduated from Kentucky, kind of thought she was done with softball. And, you know, when you get bit by the bug, you, you get bit by the bug. Grad <laughs> student in Arizona found her way on, and she just has such a high game IQ. It'll be really fun to watch her back in the Bluegrass State. I know Caitlin Lowe is excited to have her as part of the staff. She now faces Daisy Hess at the batter's box for the cards. Fifth year from Ackworth, Georgia. Missing low. One and one, the count to Hess. Hess bringing in a 345 batting average. Well, off speed just misses. Two and one, the count to Daisy Hess. This is chopped foul. Looking at the rest of the defense for Arizona behind the dish, Emily Shep. Third base, we already said her name. Blaze Behringer, a short Taylor Beal. And then second base, Ali Skaggs, hometown hero, was an amazing player at local Ballard High School, making her homecoming, as Joanna mentioned. And then rounding out the infield, Carly Scoopin, a name that anybody who follows softball has heard her name at first base. Outfield left to right, Dakota Kennedy, Reagan, Reagan Shockey, and Jasmine Perez Chica rounding out and a hard hit ball over to Hallie Skaggs. The bobbles over and off the body of Skaggs. And I do believe, and I might need fact checked on this from someone, but I think that's her first air in like two years. And she was uh, air free in 2023. She's a Rawlings NFCA Gold Glove winner, Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. That is that is something that's gonna keep her up at night, but is no reflection of her defensive ability. She is a wall out there, and I don't think we'll see that again. So with that, Hess on first base. Holloway just beats out that throw. That was Gabby Holloway. 
Louisville attacking early in the count here. Something that they have, have wanted to do. And with Stoddard, she throws a lot of strikes. So you're going to have the ability to hit. She's going to hit both corners of the plate. You can see this is a good pitch for Holloway. She's looking for it. Hits it hard. Able to leg out the back end of that double play and break that up. Now it's Riley Frizzell to the plate for the cards. Stoddard's piss, pitch misses inside. Rizal, the senior from Willoughby, Ohio. Transfer from Mizzou. Leads the cards with five home runs. That misses inside to Frizzell. Good to see Gabby Holloway getting some hacks this year. I love it. it. Well, and here's the thing. I don't know if anybody would have known this. I did not. Talking to Coach April, she said that the one person on their team that will hit a tape measure home run, we'll come back to that. Frizzell drives one up the third baseline. Holloway will hold up at third base and cards with runners at second and third. A double by Frizzell. A great shot there down the line and <laughs> might be might be kicking herself a little bit. Didn't run for Gabby. Um, you know, usually two outs, you might not pull the trigger on the pinch runner and you know, un unable to score on a ball that goes to the fence, but definitely have the ducks on the pond here. And for Louisville, this is where it matters. Weren't able to capitalize a little bit last weekend. Really looking for Vanessa Miller to drive in some runs in this AB. Well, Vanessa Miller bringing in a 309 average, but with two outs, She's 385 and 375 with runners in scoring position. Got some clutch ice water veins so far this season. We'll see if she can continue that. This is well struck into left field, but a great grab there by Dakota Kennedy to make that third out. Louisville leaves. You talked about some leaving base runners on uh, this past weekend. They kind of continue that streak there, leaving two on, but some well-struck balls for the cards here in the first. Coming to the end of the second. The last two seasons. Catches the outside part of the plate for a called strike. Arizona on day seven, Joanna, of an 11 day road trip. And their first road trip of the year. You know, we talk so much about teams from the Midwest, Northern states who will spend, you know, their first 20 games on the road. And it's not surprising for Arizona. This is their first stretch on the road and part of a swing through Tuscaloosa back here to Louisville before they head west to take on Oregon State and Corvallis to open up pack play. Arizona most recently at Alabama, as you mentioned, for the Crimson Classic. Had some wins, had a tie, and a pair of losses to Alabama. Back up to Alyssa Zabala, who gets to put out at first for the first out. You know, so much of the game when you listen to coaches and student athletes, it's process, right? Stay in the process, process driven, win the inning. And, and even though the scoreboard reflects no runs, Louisville has to feel really good about that first inning, what they were able to do on defense and offense. And, and starting off the second with a quick out is huge as well. Hoping to do the same here with Blaze Behringer. Senior, also a second team NFCA All West selection last season. A little interesting to see Behringer move her feet in the box here. Definitely more comfortable with the swing. Generally, when she does go in motion, uses that more as a timing mechanism. So, information she's getting from the dugout probably helps her make that decision. But not one to use the short game. So, It'd be very tentative right now if I'm Richardson or, you know, Frizzell on the corners and how far I'm going to come in on her. Two and one at the count to Behringer.
This is high and outside. Three and one now. Going inside, Daisy Hess moving to the left, making the grab. Oda Frizzell at first for the second out, and Louisville's defense continue to stay in strong. Absolutely, and, and a great pitch here. Zabala continuing not to give in. She's keeping her pitches where she wants them to be, using that defense, and Daisy keeps getting more and more comfortable playing here as her second year, really, and with the program and holding down that shortstop position. Yes, a transfer from Georgia State has started at shortstop every game so far, wearing a Cardinals uniform. Came in and made an immediate impact last season for the cards. Off speed is in for a strike one and one. The count to Kaya Altmeyer, sophomore from San Diego, California. Able to hold that back, two and one. Altmeyer bringing in a 3.53 batting average. But 4.12 with two outs. And this is outside. Swung on and well foul. <laughs> and another deep count for Alyssa Zabala, who has won every deep count thus far. Payoff pitch to Altmeyer is an off speed. And she will be rung up with a backwards K. And that'll do it. Another three up, three down for the cards. It's Richardson, Goff, and Alexander coming to the plate for Louisville. Coming up here in the bottom of the second next. <laughs> Bailey Richardson will make her way to the plate to face Miranda Stoddard here in the bottom of the second. Richardson, the graduate student from Locust Grove, Georgia. Swings on this, and it is sky high under his alley skags, but gets called off by Paris Chica, who makes the grab in right field for the first out for the Wildcats. Yeah, Louisville continuing to jump on pitches early. And, you know, one thing we've seen from Stoddard consistently is her ability to attack the plate. It looks a little different this year for this Louisville team who has known her previously that she throws more down. Really developed a drop ball with Christian Conrad, the pitching coach from Arizona, and has embraced that with those levers that she has. And you know, he really saw her as a drop ball pitcher that didn't use it much. And she went all in. And really, when she can pinpoint that accuracy east-west, add the drop, she's very difficult. Did a wonderful job in Tuscaloosa, extremely sharp against the Crimson Tide last weekend. Stoddard's delivery in for a strike. Kylie Goff, senior from West Lafayette, Indiana. This is outside to Goff. Goff transfer from Maryland by way of Purdue. That Maryland led the Big Ten with 13 thrown out base runners defensively. I mean, a, a very impressive pickup for the cards. That's in for a strike. Well, you know, those bat ball circles, Goff's dad, the baseball coach at Purdue, a relationship with Holly April, and, and really one of the first coaches that uh, was, was recruiting Kylie back in the day at Pitt, trying to get her to go to Pitt, and you know ends up choosing Purdue, and then 
goes to Maryland and now finding her way to Louisville after a, a Maryland coaching change. So um, I think everybody is, is happy to be where they are for the year and definitely give some stability behind the plate for Louisville, who really wasn't sure how that hole was going to yeah. get filled in the middle of the summer. The two and two delivery to golf. Mrs. Lone outside. Swung on and fouled off. Another payoff pitch here to Kylie Goff. Swung on and almost identically fouled off the front of the cards dugout. Off speed misses. Goff is aboard with the free pass. I love that pitch call though. It's just, you know, you're sitting here and you're thinking she's fouled those off. You know, if you can come back with the with the change up for a strike, it's a great pitch. And sometimes it works, sometimes it's it doesn't, but I love that pitch call and great job at the plate, finding a way on. And, and Goff, that's what she has a knack for, finding a way on. She'll get hit, she'll walk, put a ball in play. And it jives so well with this offensive philosophy of Louisville of using the free pass as an offensive weapon. Now it's Ellie Alexander lays the bunt down, bobbled by Stoddard. Everybody's safe. And a good bunt there by Ali Alexander. So uncharacteristic right now of this Arizona team. Second air in as many innings. Coming into this game, Wildcats are fielding 985, fifth in the nation. Oh, they've been playing at home. They've had a little bit different scenario with knowing the dirt, knowing the play, but they did not have great conditions in Tuscaloosa. It was cold, it was yeah. wet. So defensively, a very good team. We got the shift on. The shift. Bringing in the extra infielder here, losing the right fielder. Spray charts show that that's where Paige Garrity's going to go, but she's had a hot bat as of late. She has, and for Garrity, it probably means she's not going to see anything on the inner half, right? Or they don't think that she's going to be able to lift a ball on the inner half. She's going to keep it on the ground. So bringing in that extra defender, trying to keep the lead runner away from third base. This is low and outside. 2-0 oh, the count to Garrity. Have a little conference here. Make sure everybody's on the same page. The base runners, Kylie Goff at second, Ali Alexander at first. Coach April also going to take the opportunity to talk about that shift a little bit here with Garrity, how to how to beat that, how to approach that. Might not be able to do it in Major League Baseball anymore, but it's alive and well here. I <laughs> love it. Here to the senior from Frankfurt, Illinois. Transferred from Auburn after two seasons there. Started all 56 games last season in the outfield. Looks to bunt. That goes foul. Everyone will reset. Two and one, the count to Garrity. Misses outside and low, three and one now. 
Stoddard, Stoddard really looking to paint that outside corner, as you mentioned, Joanna. And she finds the gap. Goff has the green light. Allie Alexander get held up at second. And even with the three infielders on the left-hand side, Paige Garrity coming up big, finding the gap, gets an RBI and cards on the board first. Well, what you're going to see on this, Shockey comes in to play this position, but you see that stutter step yeah. just decides to go back to the base, taking her base responsibility above the path of the ball. And anytime you are playing defense, it is ball first and ball always. It will dictate where you move. Took a guess on that one, I think, and not able to keep it in the infield, and that leads to the first run of the... How about Katie Thatcher coming in to pinch hit for the cards? We got to watch her pinch hit last week, Joanna, and in that pinch hit, it was her fourth at-bat of the season, drills a home run. That she did. She's an aggressive hitter. And she's someone that you continued to see reps over the weekend in Florida and several of those games. Yeah. And, you know, for Louisville, just really working with the DP role and, and sliding people in and out. And if it's not Gabby Holloway, it's you know going to be Thatcher getting her chances and having an opportunity here, although she's falling behind quickly at 0-2. Right, yeah, after that home run, got an additional... 15 at-bats over the weekend. Stoddard continues to look on that inside corner. Doesn't get Thatcher to chase this time. Freshman from Rock Falls, Illinois. I think anytime you put one over the fence in a pinch hit opportunity, you're going to keep getting chances, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And and looking for who's your pinch hitter going to be. I mean, Michaela Hurst owned that role she did. a year ago. I mean, she's like my favorite pinch hitter to watch, and it's such a hard task. It is such a hard task. So when you find someone who excels at it, you want to keep them as much as you can. Well, and that's a hit by pitch. So she gets aboard by taking one off the shoulder. Bases now loaded for the cards. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner here for Thatcher. We've got a busy bullpen for Arizona right now. Two individuals up throwing, it looks like, and I think some movement finding out, you know, how close are they? That's always the question. Find yep. out how long they need, you know, and. Uh, for Louisville, it's really important to capitalize right now. You've got bases loaded. Try to make a move here before Arizona can choose to bring in Silva or Blanchard. So it's Daisy Hess at the plate. Chelsea Mack re-enters the game to run. So she's at first base, swung on and fouled off. It's Allie Alexander at third, Paige Garrity at second, and again, Chelsea Mack at first. Hess reached on an error, that very rare error by Ali Skaggs. Off speed is in for a strike. 0 oh, 2, the count to Hess. Good comeback pitch there from Stoddard, finding that change up, spotting that for a strike. Very aggressive Louisville hitters right now. That change up is, is a key weapon to keep them off balance. Goes the inside, and again off the glove. Taylor Beal. Louisville puts another one across the board with a hard hit ball off the bat of Daisy Hess. And I'll tell you what, this is the personality of Holly April. You think about what her teams have always looked like, whether it's a pit or here, it's putting the ball in play, challenging the defense, putting pressure on, speed on the bases, being able to just continue challenging. And you know, the, the one thing with that is you get one run at a time. You know, you really want to see a, a double to the gap and really maximize your opportunity here, but the pressure's still on for Louisville. It's Gabby Holloway, another hard hit ball to the left-hand side. They get the out at third. But another run crosses the plate. It's 3 nothing cards. Yeah, I think Louisville would gladly exchange outs for runs right now. So 
the decision from Beal to take that out that was closest to her. Puts another one across for the Cardinals. Now it's Riley Frizzell who had a rocket up the third base line for a double, the last at bat facing Miranda Stoddard. This is inside 2 and 0 oh now the count to Frizzell. Catching the outside part of the plate for a called strike. That catches the inside part of the play. Miranda Stoddard doing a really good job moving the ball east to west. Two and two. Well, Deuce is wild early in this season here, Joanna. It is your favorite. It is my favorite. The off speed is waited on, drilled into center field. Making a great catch there, covering a lot of ground is Reagan Shockey. Louisville leaves two on, but they put three across the plate. They're up 3-0, moving into the third. Oh, it is not the Cats that you think. These are the Arizona Wildcats making the trip cross country. And local standout, Allie Skaggs, to the plate for the first time this evening here in her hometown. The ball is pitched in for a strike. Skaggs named to the preseason all Pac-12, named to the USA Softball Top 50 Player of the Year watch list. And Joanna mentioned some of her defensive accolades earlier. NFCA Rawlings Gold Glove winner last season. Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year went to local Ballard High School here. Two and one, the count to Skag. Sky high into the right-hand side and into the Arizona bullpen. Skaggs bringing in a 278 batting average. Swung on, it's sent to the left-hand side. Making the backhand grab is Bailey Richardson over to Riley Frizzell and a big out. What a play there by Richardson. Yeah, great play from Richardson and a good pitch from Zabala coming back inside on that righty and really forcing Skaggs to hit the inside pitch there. And the only two righties in the lineup for Arizona, they do hit back to back, Skaggs and Shep. So, you know, Zabala really likes to throw that screwball, which from a right handed pitcher is going into a right handed hitter. Not a lot of opportunities, you know, to throw it against the barrier of the hitter like she has with Skaggs and now a Shep. So, we'll see if she uses that pitch a little bit more in this at bat. As you mentioned, Emily Shep, the freshman from Torrance, California. Down across the heart of the plate for a called strike. 0-2, oh, the count now to Shep. This is outside. Shep had a 298 clip so far this season. One and two, swung on, sent to the right hand side. Under it is Vanessa Miller, who will make the grab in foul territory for out number two for the cards. 
we've talked a lot about Alyssa Zabala and her maturation process from her freshman year to a sophomore year. And you know what makes that tougher is the, the catching changes. You know, yeah. having a new catcher and, and then even just being depleted uh, defensively and, you know, really having some defensive changes behind you too. She's just done such a great job taking control of so many games already this year. Well, and a testament, too, to Kylie Goff coming in and taking that ownership role and being able to work with new pitchers as well. But Alyssa Zabala pitching well, and Allie Alexander makes the grab, and Taylor Beal lines out for out number three here in the top of the third. Cards still at 3 nothing. They'll come to the bat after this. Flew out to left field, her first time facing Miranda Stoddard. Catching the inside part of the plate for a called strike. Miller, the senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, swings on this, and this is absolutely sky high. No doubter, over the second level, berm. Five home runs on this season. I mean, you could just tell as soon as that hit the bat, Joanna, that was gone. It was absolutely gone. And earlier I started to tell the story about, you know, Gaddy Holloway being the tape stick, yes. you know, uh -huh. the tape measure home run hitter. And I, Gabby, you got a challenger. Yeah. Vanessa Miller just absolutely crushed that one. Louisville puts another one across the board with Vanessa Miller's home run. Saw that like a beach ball. And looks like we're going to see a pitching change here for the Wildcats. Isa Silva looks to take over in the circle for Miranda Stoddard. You know, and that's a tough outing for Stoddard. I know that's not what she has become a use to really the last couple of starts that she's had and, and even her work in relief lately, but they happen. You know, she was rolling some ground balls, three errors on the defense definitely doesn't help her. The difference with Aisa coming in, Silva, for Arizona is that she's going to get a lot more fly outs than she's going to get ground outs. So for her on the year, she's got 72 fly outs to 27 ground outs, which is about the exact opposite of what you get from Stoddard. So look for her to work a little bit more up in the zone. She is a lefty, so going to give you a little bit of a different look there. But same thing, she wants to include the defense. She throws everything. And for her, I just can't get over the comparisons between Aisa Silva and Alyssa Zabala. I mean, they are so yeah. similar. You know, they're tied for second nationally in wins on the year, and they're going to use the upper half of the zone, maturity level. Silva was an early high school grad coming into Arizona, so graduated early, started pitching that spring, should have been a high school senior, and she's thrown in the pack. And, you know, she's really come into her own this year. Coaching staff really likes where she is. And the thing that they say with her is the most important, she has to attack these hitters. And Louisville's been aggressive, so it should work, you know, in maybe both of their favors. We'll see how that goes if she comes right at them. Well, Bailey Richardson will be the first to face Silva. That just misses. 1-0 and oh, the count to Richardson. Richardson popped up into right field, her first at bat facing Miranda Stoddard. And over the glove there of Emily Shep. Two and zero oh to Richardson. Swung on and sent into left field. Kennedy under it will make the grab. 
It's out number one for the Wildcats. Good contact from Richardson on that one. And, you know, as we said, with the fly out, Silva looking to pitch to that contact. And she'll include the defense and see if she can get Arizona out of this inning. That'll make way for Kylie Goff. Kylie Goff last inning got things going. She got the free pass from Miranda Stoddard. With that walk, she was the first run to score for the cards. It's in the dirt. Want to know the count to Goff? We talked about Kylie Goff just getting on board any way she can. She's been hit by pitches 13 times so far this season. I need to look up the, the career numbers, <laughs> but she has a knack for that. I mean, that's <laughs> that's something that she's done, you know, her whole career. And, you know, we, we laughed at the Evo Shield really allowed teams to weaponize that. And, you know, for better or worse, there are some hitters that have the ability mentally to take that inside part of the plate away with their body. And it really allows them to be successful on the opposite half of the plate. Two and one the count. Again, in and up on the hands, fouled up and out. The two and two is fouled up. Uh-oh, coming back. <laughs> Heads up. We don't see him come back very I often. I know. <laughs> Wasn't done. Wanted to come back and play. Goff steps back into the box. Misses outside. That'll be a full count now to Kylie Goff. Goff so patient at the plate. That, you know, set up to be a chase pitch from the get-go. Not one to give in on those marginal pitches. That's high and inside, and again, Goff aboard with the walk. Deja vu all over again, right? When you look at some of the, the scorebook things, it's just those, you know, next at bat, past the bat. See if Allie continues on the small game or if she swings away. Did have an extra base hit, a double in her last game. They were in Florida. Able to swing away, but also able to lay down a good bunt, which is what she did her first at bat. A little bobble from Miranda Stoddard made the throw late. Emily Shep wants a quick word with Aisa Silva, her infield. One out here in the bottom of the third. Cards up 4 nothing. Vanessa Miller stepped into the plate here at the bottom of the third and drilled one up on the second level of the berm over the right field fence to make it a 4 nothing ball game. That's in for a strike. Two and one now the count to Allie Alexander. Alexander the junior from Taylorsville, Kentucky, about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, maybe 30, depending on how fast you go. From Shorter for you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell my secrets, Joanna. <laughs> and she's been such a fantastic utility player. She's, we, we've seen her all around the infield. Just puts her where, you know, wherever coach wants her, that's where she plays. And being asked to do more than ever from a leadership standpoint, you're absolutely right. We saw her play every game at shortstop as a freshman. We saw her play every game at third base, seemingly last year as a sophomore. Hey, your junior year, you know, got a, got a couple people that we got to compensate for here with injuries and different things. Let's slide you over to second base. And she's been fantastic. Well, that will be a backwards K for Silva, but golf does take the extra 60 feet. Finds herself aboard at second. Yeah. 
And again, the shift is on. Garrity able to find a gap on that left-hand side into left center. Her first at bat. Two and zero. The count to Garrity. Fouls this one off. And it is really hard to do, especially if you're only going to see pitches on the outside half. But with a left-handed pitcher and the first baseman playing back at the base, any bunt that you can take with you down that first baseline, you, you have the ability to walk to first with Garrity's speed. Just so hard to do where she's getting pitched. And where she is on the plate. You know, she's not one to crowd. Yeah. She stays a little bit more off. Two and two, the count to Garrity. Swings on this, up the middle. Silva gets the ball, gets it over to first base for the third out. Louisville Strands, Kylie Goff for this evening. Zabala's delivery misses outside. 1 0, the count to Reagan Shockey. Chopper over to the left hand side. Daisy Hess with a great play over to Frizzell at first for the first out. And again, defense doing big things for Louisville today. Well, and Zabala continuing to pound that zone and saying, hey, I trust my defense. Go ahead, put the ball on the ground, and we're going to make it work. And this is how Arizona is built. That's what they want to do, put the ball on the ground, speed, challenge it out. And for right now, the defenders for the University of Louisville are in the right place at the right time, making the right plays. Paris Chica tipped that ball foul. Gonna lay down that bunt. Here's Chica ground out to third base, her first time facing Zabala. Pulls the bunt back, one and one the count. And I like that with the top of the order up, you have the speed, you have the back control, figuring out where you can put pressure on the defense. Obviously, Daisy Hess has stepped up. You know, we've seen Bailey Richardson step up. So I'd look to see with the right side a little bit, put some pressure on Bunt, making Kylie Goff field something, Zabala field something, just changing the cadence a little bit for Arizona hitters here. Again, fouling that off. We'll even up the count two and two. Swings way, fouls that off. Continues to battle here. These are the counts where I think whether it's Coach April or Griffin Joyner, they're going to have to find out that next most comfortable pitch for Alyssa Zabala. Is she going to come inside? Is she going to use the changeup? What's it going to be to change that view of these Arizona hitters as they have a second time through the lineup? Chops this one up and on that hot corner, Bailey Richardson not able to make the grab there.
And they're going to call Paris Chica out. Yeah, we're going to have an out-of-the-box call here on Paris Chica. And the first at bat, she was right on that line. And you can tell just, you know, comfortable coming across the plate. You can see her step in front. Great job there from home plate umpire Aaron Golden seeing that, being able to make that call. It's so hard. There's so much going on in front of you. When she came all the way in front of the plate, definitely catches his eye. So big turn of events there for the cards in their favor, making it two outs now instead of a base runner aboard. We'll get another good look at this. Yes, well outside of the box there, Joanna. You can see that left foot of Paris Chica. Dakota Kennedy takes a swing, fouls this one off. Dakota Kennedy ground out to Alyssa Zabala back in the first. The one and one misses high and inside. Definitely not where Goff thought that pitch was going to go. She did a good <laughs> job. Good job raining that back in. Just the fourth time these two teams have met. Arizona leads the overall series four to nothing. Last meeting was at the Mary Nutter back in 2022. Arizona won that game five to three. You know what's crazy? We talked about at our last game, Western Kentucky and you know Louisville had both just playing their 25th season, right? And, right. And uh, this is Arizona's 50th yeah. season. You just think about the powerhouse of Arizona, the history of Arizona, and really comparatively speaking, you know, how much in its infancy softball is at Louisville. Up the middle behind Zabala. She stomps her foot, angry that that one got past her. But Kennedy aboard, the first base runner for the Wildcats this evening. Yeah, that hit breaks up the no-hitter campaign that Zabala had going. And when you're a pitcher and you're throwing that well, you, you don't want it to be you that could have fielded the, the <laughs> ball, you know. But she that was well struck. That's a base hit all day long. And, you know, it doesn't take away from anything that's happened so far. But just going to take a minute and have Coach Joyner come out and just talk to her, make sure she's still in a good place, you know, reestablish the game plan. Now it's Carly Scoopin. Back to the plate. She also ground out to Alyssa Zabala, her first at bat. Two outs here for the cards. This is outside. You know, and if there's a student athlete that Louisville circled and said, don't let her beat us, you know, it's, it's probably scooping. She can change a game with one swing, seven home runs on the year. That pitching circle visit, obviously just to make sure the game plan is still there. Sometimes, you know, they give up that first hit and the next, it's the next one that gets you. And so refocus and make sure you're pitching the, the plan that you have against a very hefty hitter and scooping. High and outside. Not putting anything close to the middle of the plate for scooping, as you mentioned. And that catches the outside part of the plate for called strike three and one the count to scoop in. Swung on and sent into left field giving chases Paige Garrity and that ball drops in front of Garrity. Kennedy has the green light and will cross home plate. With one swing of the bat, Arizona has a run across the board. In fact, Garrity thought that ball was hit a lot harder than it was. Retreats on that, not able to come back in and make the catch, gets stuck underneath her, and then pass on the relay, unable to keep that ball in line. Would have been a tough play to make anyway. Kennedy was definitely rolling around the bases. It 
It'll be ruled a double into left field. Catches the outside part of the plate to Blaze Berenger. Senior ground out to short. First time facing Zabala. So scoop in now the base runner on second. Two outs for the cards. That misses outside to Berenger. Again, missing outside. Now three and one to Behringer. And this starts to become a very significant spot, right? You have two outs looking to get out of this inning. Need to attack here if you're Alyssa Zabala. And she does just that. That ball is fouled off. Full count now. Again, swung on, fouled into the back curtain. Behringer does such a great job of finding her way on base, reaching first at a 421 clip and really making sure that you are attacking in that strike zone, making her work for the ability to reach base safely. What about Bailey Richardson and a Good split there by Frizzell, but she couldn't make the grab. Everybody's safe, and now Arizona with runners on first and third. It was a great grab by Richardson, but that's a tough play to make over to first base. It is terrific ball on the ground and great flow. I mean, you see her get up off the ground, yeah. how hard that is. Ground flow there was tremendous. But when you have the speed on that you do, you just rush so much. I think that throw just was rushed. Wasn't something that Frizzell could handle and, you know, puts runners on the corners. And, and if you're Louisville here, you got to be thinking, hey, there's still two outs. You know, let's roll a ground ball. Let's get this done. And if you're Arizona, you know, it's – ducks on the pond and you got to take advantage this is the first real threat you've had this game so getting out of here only scoring one run that's not an option for you you're going to capitalize get a crooked number first pitch delivery to kaya altmeyer in for a strike swung on and fouled off and zabala works her head in the count here zero and two Get it scooping at third. Behringer at first. Altmeyer at the plate. This is outside. Zabala working that ladder, trying to get a chase on that pitch. Again, a lot of discipline here from both sides. Big deep sigh from Zabala and the delivery just misses high. Two and two is swung on, fouled off. <laughs> The off speed just misses. 
That's a great pitch. That is a great pitch from Zabala. Not able to get the strike call on that one, but gutsy call, good delivery, even better plate presence. Sometimes you just freeze and falling out of the zone there. Missing low and outside, and that'll load the bases for the Wildcats, bringing Ali Skaggs, the hometown hero, to the plate. First walk given by Zabala. You know, bringing the righties back up in the order, you're probably gonna see Zabala with a little bit of a longer leash here because the pitcher that's most likely gonna be in relief, not as good to a righty as she is to a lefty. Gabby Holloway, much better with lefties and probably gonna see Zabala at least have a chance at these next two. Skaggs ground out to third base. Back in the third. This is inside, 2-0 and now, the count to Skaggs. Across the heart of the plate for a called strike. We got Scoopin, Behringer, and Altmeyer aboard for the Wildcats. One run so far here in the top of the fourth. Double off the bat of Carly Scoopin. This is fouled off. That'll even up the count two and two. And on that two and two pitch, she does go. And that is a strikeout for Alyssa Zabala to keep Arizona at bay. They had the bases loaded. Louisville gets out of a jam. They're still up four to one, heading into the bottom of the fourth. Chelsea Mack makes her way back to the plate. She will face now Aisa Silva in the circle for the Cats. Flashes a bunt. That'll roll foul. Mack ground out to pitcher. Her first trip to the plate facing then pitcher Miranda Stoddard. outside. Mac the so sophomore from Brecksville, Ohio. Transferred from the University of Kentucky about an hour away after one season with those cats. Now a card. Flashes the bunt, pulls it back. Two and one the count. Well, I think the lineup move, having Mac in the leadoff spot, allows someone like a Daisy Hess, who has been leading off the ability to maybe put some more RBIs on the board because she does have that gap to gap power. So seeing Chelsea Mack get comfortable enough to lead off the offense here is, is a really good sign for the coming weeks for Louisville. I know early in the year, they're just kind of waiting, waiting on her to settle in and get comfortable. It's hard. It's yeah. hard to go to a new program, new expectations. New, you know, everything's new from verbiage to just process. So I think this is a good sign for Louisville's lineup solidifying down the stretch. And again, the defensive shift by Arizona. They're not afraid to make that. And a swing and a miss there. And another punch out there for Aisa Silva. Silva's second strikeout of the game. You mentioned Daisy Hess. It is now her turn to face Silva for the first time. 
Hess has reached twice on a pair of errors. Swung on and tipped into the glove of Emily Shep. One and one, the count to Daisy Hess. Just misses. Two and one, the count. Popped up and into the stands. Got a good crowd on hand tonight. Nice little Wednesday game. This game was originally skated, slated for last night. Had some rain in the area and bumped it to tonight. Beautiful mid-50s, cloudy day here in Louisville. Not too bad for early March. No, I think they'll all take it, especially the, uh, the weather that was presenting itself yesterday. I think everybody just glad to be able to get on the field today. Absolutely. Full count, payoff pitch, swung on, sent into center field. Reagan Shockey under it will make the grab in center field for the Wildcats for out number two. Should probably give a little bit of love to the grounds crew as well for, you know, the, all the water that we've had recently, even the outlying areas, right? The warning track, the grass, it all looks great. They do such a wonderful job here taking care of the, the turf and the dirt. Visors off to Rodney New and his crew. Taking care of beautiful Don Dabina Field here at Ulmer Stadium. It's Gabby Holloway making her third trip to the plate. Holloway has reached on a pair of fielder's choices. Hit the ball both times. Up and over the glove of Shep. Holloway really having plate appearances for the first time in her senior campaign. She's been <laughs> bitten by the injury bug a little bit and not able to really focus a lot on hitting with different things she's had going on in, in her career. But nice to see her get a little bit of plate time here. And, you know, she, again, we talked about this, her first plate appearance, but um, Coach April said that, you know, when it comes to those tape measure home runs, she's she's got it. So we'll see if she can rival Vanessa Miller in this at bat. Well, she just turned on that one and absolutely sent that into the roundabout, but this is sky high. Under it is Scoopin who will make the grab in foul territory for out number three. Nothing doing for the cards. It's four to one. Louisville heading into the fifth. It's Shep, Beal, and Shockey due to the plate for Arizona. Shep 0 for 1 on tonight's game, facing Alyssa Zabala. Popped up into foul territory down the right-hand side. Back in the third. Freshman from Torrance, California. Swings on this again. Not playable. Good catch by the fan, though. Yeah. If this was banana ball, right? You know, that would have been an out. That'd be an out. That would have been an out. Banana's coming to Louisville later I this know, summer. That's so that's exciting. Have you gotten your tickets? Or gotten I'm on the wait I'm list? in the lottery wait the lottery, list. Lottery, that's what it is. Yes. There are any bananas listening? Just saying. <laughs> Joanna Lane. <laughs> that's right. Sent into right field. Vanessa Miller will make the grab for out number one here in the top of the fifth. It'll be Taylor Beal back to the plate. She lined out to second baseman Ali Alexander. Her first time facing Alyssa Zabala back in the third. That misses high and outside. 
Beal, the sophomore from Folsom, California. Fun little tidbit. Her aunt played with at Arizona with head coach Caitlin Lowe. That is a fun little tidbit. Two and zero, oh, the count to Beal. Again, sent over to the right hand side. Ali, Ali, Alexander makes the backhand grab for the out number two here in the top of the fifth. So steady. She just plays such a great defense and always is, you know, seeing the, her ball herself through the ball. You can just see the glove work down on the ground here. Head stays down on that. And really, Louisville has played pretty good defense on a team that's used to putting pressure on people. You know, a little bit of unforced errors. But honestly, this, this game is, has been tough to play defensively. A lot of moving pieces, a lot of parts. We've had shifts. We've had short game. Defenders doing everything they can here to keep their team within striking range. Reagan Shockey lays the bunt down. Alyssa Zabala with a little stutter step, thinking that Richardson was going to call her off. So now Reagan Shockey aboard. A little defensive miscue there. Yeah, I thought the ball took a little bit of a funny bounce. You can kind of see it. It hits and just spins. Yeah. Doesn't move very much between the no person's area out there <laughs> between home plate and the pitcher's plate. And you know, it, this is why those first two outs were so important because you come back to the top of the lineup, you know, you put the leadoff runner aboard, uh, but you have two outs, you know, so you can continue to really pick and choose the parts where you want to challenge. Whereas if, you know, eight or nine would have found a way on, it would have gotten a little bit more difficult. We're gonna have a pinch hitter here. It's going to be number 22, Paige Dimler, the junior from Vista, California. Dimler, a couple of years ago, was named the Pac-12 All-Freshman Team. Also a member of the NFCA All-West Third Team. She had 16 home runs. I'm sorry, 10 home runs. She ranks 16th in single season home runs for freshmen at Arizona. Pretty impressive there by the junior. Swings on this, fouls it off. Dimmler just 14 at bats so far this season. Zabala's delivery misses outside. Averaging 286 on those 14 at bats. The two and one to Dimmler. Catches the outside part of the plate. It's two and two now. This is a well-struck ball into left field. Keeping in front of it is Paige Garrity, who gets it in to Daisy Hess. And a well-struck ball and a great pinch hit there by Paige Dimmler. Well, and a great job of taking what you're given. And you can see this ball elevates just a little bit, able to stick the bat out, continue the plane where it was pitched. A great job there taking what you're given. You know, if you're an Arizona offensive athlete. And, and that's what Caitlin Lowe talked about a little bit when we spoke on Tuesday was we're just trying so hard. We just we need to take what we're given. You know, we need to play the game and just take our time with it a little bit. And I think that, you know, you look at some of this, a lot of that that quote unquote trying too hard comes from just having competitive kids. And yeah. that's one way that she describes this team. They're so competitive. 
Daisy Hess able to make the play at first base. Gets Dakota Kennedy out at first. Arizona strands two, and Louisville gets themselves out of it. Riley Frizzell will make her way to the plate for the cards. Frizzell one for two on the night. Had a double in the first. Flew out to center field in the second. First time facing Aisa Silver, Silva. Swings on this into the dugout of Arizona. Giving good chase is Carly Scoopin over at first base for the Cats. Well, and since entering, Silva has not allowed a base runner. I mean, she's been excellent and getting stronger as she goes. You know, I thought her you know, facing batters, her fourth, fifth, and sixth batters, she was stronger than her first, second, yeah. third batters. And so now, you know, really looking at having the last two Cardinals she hasn't faced yet coming to the plate, she's continuing to deal. One and two, the count to Frizzell. Swung on and sent into right field. And this will be just foul. Giving good chase as Paris Chica. Saying Frizzell did not break the plane, so two and two the count. Good check there, tough pitch. Silva continuing to deal. That misses high. Making it a full count to Frizzell. That's a swing and a miss there. The third strikeout for Aisa Silva. And as you mentioned, she just continues to get stronger and stronger, but she's got a tall test right now, Joanna. She does. As we look at this pitch coming through from Frizzell, just unable to hold up, really working well in the top of the strike zone. Not a lot of called strikes up there, but that those pitches looking good enough to really cause these Cardinals to chase. And Vanessa Miller takes that first pitch right down the mill middle. Miller with an absolute bomb of a home run, her last at bat. Obviously not official, but I do love a good Google Maps. Yes. And uh, I did the, did the thing with Google Maps, <laughs> and my best guess is 258 feet. Um, and, and I don't think I'm overestimating. I've gotten no. the opinion of several that say that's pretty accurate. So we'll see if we get any data on that one after the fact. But uh, it was an absolute monster. So Miller won for two with that home run back in the third. Fouls this one off. Tough pitch there and on the handle. Let everybody have a second to reset. The one and two to Miller. This is outside. Two and two now. And a swing and a miss. Drop ball by Shep, but she makes the play down to first for the second out. Yeah, and again, Silva working that ladder, not 
limited to merely the north and south part of the zone, but will go east and west as well. Had come in and jammed Miller, got that foul ball, and then working outside for a take, and then coming back outside and getting the swing. Now it's Bailey Richardson to face Silva for the second time. Richardson, the first Louisville Cardinal to face Silva inside the circle. Flew out to left field. Tuno, the count to Richardson, swung on into center field. And that is gone. Oh my gosh. Reagan Shockey looked like she had a good beat on it, but it just held up long enough. Well, Shockey absolutely had the jump, and she was right on it, but she ran out of real estate. There's a big park here, 220 in center, and I don't know how tall that fence is, but it is tall. And this one just kept on going. It's going to go right at this camera and it finds its way out of the yard. <laughs> Took our cameraman out of focus. <laughs> that is Bailey Richardson's second home run of the season. And it's a 5-1 ball game in favor of the hometown cards. Kylie Goff back to the plate. And as we just get one more look at that pitch, you can see that it just was a left. That's not something Silva has done. That ball has had so much plate on it. And, you know, kudos there to be able to put the swing on it. You never know when you're going to get the miss. But being ready to capitalize on the miss pitch is the difference in so many games. And that is exactly what Richardson did, capitalize on the rare mistake from Silva tonight. Kylie Goff has been issued two walks so far tonight. Super patient at the plate. Catches the inside part of the plate. Two and one, the count to Goff. The other number we're going to need to get is average pitches per plate appearance from Goff because she's taken a lot of pitches. Just that's, you know, how she works well, helps the hitter behind her always. This is sky high, the left side of the field. Making the grab is Taylor Beal, shortstop in foul territory for the third out. Louisville puts another across the. <laughs> Culminating in the lone run for Arizona thus far. Off speed is in for a strike. And this is a challenging spot. Four, five, six in the batting order in the sixth inning. Really, the faster you can get through this, if you can avoid the coming back to the top of the order, that's better. Melissa Zabala making a great move to the right-hand side. Able to get out number one. Wasn't going to miss that one after no. missing the bunt last inning, Joanna. <laughs> no, she wasn't. Help yourself, Alyssa Zabala. You know, when your pitcher can play defense well, you know, PFPs, right? Pitcher fielding practice. That's what you have to do regularly, and you can tell it's a part of their every day. Coming off, moving to her side, great transfer and throw. It's important, and it frees up your defense to play in a different spot when you can cover ground like that. And a big first out for the cards. Makes way for Blaze Behringer. Behringer 0 for 2. Ground out to short. Did reach on an error in the fifth. It's 
next ball is pitched. Misses outside. One and one the count. Back-to-back -back balls to Behringer, makes it a 2-1 count. As we mentioned earlier, Arizona on day seven of an 11-day road trip. We'll head to Oregon State from here to open up Pac-12 play. Three-game series on the West Coast. Final year of the pack. Doesn't that just seem strange Crazy. when you think about the history of college softball and everything that that conference has meant? You know, it's there's there's no SEC without Arizona UCLA. Mm -hmm. There's just there's not in the history, the superstars. I mean, you know, every kid in our generation growing up, they want yeah. they wanted to be, you know, the next UCLA or Arizona softball player and you know, these programs have made it possible for other parts of the country to really thrive, whether it's Oklahoma or whether it's, you know, the South or whatever it might be. Uh, it's just a real shame to see some of those rivalries go by the wayside. First pitch delivery to Kaya Altmeyer in for a strike. Behringer is issued the free pass. Just the second walk given by Zabala this evening. Altmar pulls the bunt back in time. Louisville, on the other hand, will open up ACC play this weekend, a three-game series. They'll play host to the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Joanne and I will be along for the calls Friday and Saturday, and ACC Network will Bring home the conclusion on Sunday of that three-game series. Really tough stretch here for Louisville. Yeah. You know, when you look, they're going to play four games in five days against, you know, the two of the three top RPI teams on their schedule. I mean, that's a that's a really tall task, and you know, getting it started right right now. What a play there by Chelsea Mack. In center field, got a good jump on that ball from the get-go for out number two for the Cards. That'll bring Allie Skaggs back to the plate. She's got a whole fan club, got a whole section cheering for her. I just can't say enough how important it is for Coach Lowe and Arizona to schedule this game. It's just so cool to see, you know, yeah. make the effort and come back and, you know, pair it with a trip to Tuscaloosa. And they're not too close locations. <laughs> and uh, and being willing to do that, just the growing the game uh, is so important. And, and kudos to her, even from her time as a student athlete, always done things the right way with our sport. Such a wonderful ambassador. And, uh, and this is a really cool opportunity, not just for Allie, but look at all the cell phones right now, right? Look at all these people recording the at-bat. I mean, just, it's great for Louisville. It's great for softball. I just uh, think it's a, something needs to be celebrated from both fronts, scheduling the game, making it happen with the bad weather. It will make an impact because one of those kids that's sitting down there, they're going to suit up in about I 10 know. years. They're going to be doing the same thing at a, maybe the same school or a different one, but it will, it will leave a lasting memory for them. Skaggs over two. So far tonight, one and two. The pitch count. This is outside to Skaggs. Two and two now. Swung on and well struck, but foul ball.
Blaze Berenger, the base runner on first for the Wildcats. Two and two, the count to Ali Skaggs. Sends this into center field. And how about that hometown hero, home run, you gotta love it. The crowd goes wild, all the cell phones are recording this moment for Ali Skaggs. Congrats, hometown hero, welcome home. That's right, well, and you know what? It, you knew she was going to. Oh yeah. Like, you knew she was going to, and it's one of those things, and uh, I did get confirmation. It is a 10-foot fence, was pretty sure, didn't want to <laughs> say it, but, and it was no problem clearing out in center field, and that's not wind-aided. This wind is blowing from left to right, just gets a hold of this one. Zabala knows it as soon as she lets go, but you know what? That's why putting up three runs, one run, one run, you got to have that buffer because yep. this game is just dynamic and it's dynamic in so many ways. So, you know, for Louisville right here, I need to come back strong in this at bat and not let that momentum shift. For Arizona, you, you got to keep a hold of that. Some people say the home run is a momentum killer. So, you know, you've got to be able to restart a rally right now while you have it. Well, definitely Shep face Alyssa Zabala and she falls behind in the count quickly 0 and 2. Shep 0 for 2 this evening. Flew out both side both times to the right hand side. Vanessa Miller over in right field. One and two, the count to the freshman. And a, oh! Oh! All right, you gotta say it, Joanna. Do, 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 do. How about that web gem from Vanessa Miller? I didn't think there was a chance. What yep. a play. She stole this one. Not only does she get the beat on it, but a full extension, Superman style into right center field, taking away a surefire double from Shep on that one. That's going to take us to the bottom of the sixth. Louisville holding on to a 5-3. First Bowling Green State University. It was a come from behind win for the Cards. Freshman from Taunton, Mass. You think that number eight jersey just knew that it was a number eight jersey? Yeah. And, you know, when you have your, uh -huh. your first hit and it's a... It has the good juju in it. It does. I mean, Taylor Roby put up a lot of home runs in that number eight jersey. No pressure no, of none. a legacy not or anything all, right? here, Ava. But uh, no, it's uh, it's really, really fun to, to have those traditions and, and carry those on. But off to her own great start here, getting a pinch hit opportunity. 2-0 the count to Venturelli. Bells this one off. Venturelli, eight at-bats on the season. Has three hits. Seven RBIs, a big home run. Sitting in the 375 clip so far this season. And that misses outside to Venturelli. And Venturelli will find herself aboard with the walk. That's a great leadoff at bat, and that's so hard to do as a pinch hitter because you, you just want to get the ball in play. And, you know, she had that uh, one little foul ball, and other than that, did a great job keeping her role in mind and took advantage of that. And Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner now. Looks like it's gonna be Pickle Winkler. Bring some speed to the base path for the cards. Sophomore from Crofton, Kentucky. Arizona will move to that shift one more time, bringing the center fielder in to play close to second base, sliding shortstop and third base over and moving right field to center field. That is legal uh, in NCAA <laughs> softball. It's not one of the uh, similar MLB rules. And a great sacrifice bunt will move Picklewinkler up 60 feet. 
Good execution there. Some small ball action from the cards. And for Louisville, that's very much the MO. Station to station, pass the bat, turn the lineup over, and you're back to the top of the order with a runner on second base and scoring position, one out. It's Chelsea Mack back to the plate. Looking to put the shift on yet again. As Reagan Shockey will take her position in the center of the field as that fifth infielder. And again, a bunt is laid down. And great placement there by Chelsea Mack. Yep, and that's what we were talking about earlier yep. with that left-handed pitcher and the ability to take that ball with you. Great game sense there from Mack. I'm sure they've been talking about that in the dugout, especially when that shift is on. You're so needy on the rotation. Does a great job here, and you can see that it's an outside pitch. You know, everything yep. went right, but Chelsea Max bat control and game plan just won out that time, and sometimes you beat the shift, and that's what happened. So now base runners on first and third for the cards. A little huddle there with Coach Holly April. Coach Holly in her sixth season here at the helm of the cards. Christian Conrad leaving the circle for Arizona. It's his first year as pitching coach with Arizona. Previously spent time at Florida State. Spent some time with Loyola Marymount, Oregon. Has a, a great pedigree as a pitching coach. Coach Lowe, so excited to have him on board and working very well together with Coach Lappin and also Coach Bloomer, another Louisville native. I haven't got to talk about Josh <laughs> too much, but coaching third base for Arizona tonight. In for a strike. Daisy Hess at the plate for the cards. One out here for the Wildcats. Chelsea Mack swipes an extra 60 feet on that. So now two base runners in scoring position for Daisy Hess. Ball high and inside. A little matrix action there by Daisy Hess. And really uncontested from first to second is Mack. One and one, swung on. Behringer makes the put out over to Carly Scoop and base runners will hold. Two outs now for the Wildcats. Good defensive execution there. Anytime you can roll a ground ball to the left-hand side with the runner on third, gives you a chance to hold that runner. They do. Put some one out away from being able to take their turn on offense. Now it's Gabby Holloway to the plate. To face Aisa Silva. Swings on this, jammed in on, on the hands. Taylor Beal makes the grab for the third out. Louisville strands two. Their first win against Arizona. Again, Arizona leads 4 nothing in the four matchups that these two teams have faced one another. It's Taylor Beal to the plate for Arizona. First pitches in for a strike from Zabala. Zabala looking to go this distance here. You know, watching Zabala fight through some of the tough moments that she's had in this game, I think is so crucial for what she's about to embark on with ACC play. It's tough, and, and she's proven herself the ace of this team, you know, tied for second nationally in wins. I mean, she's going to get a lot of innings over the next several months, and for her to be able to continue just plugging away when people have seen you two, three times will serve her well as they get deeper and deeper into ACC play in the coming weeks. A good pitch there. A swing and a miss there from Taylor Beal. One and two, the count. Sent to the right-hand side, Ali Alexander there and gets out number one for the cards here in the top of the seventh. Big first out for Louisville. They're all big when you're looking at an upset. You know, you can start 
to see maybe hearts get a little bit sure. going. And yep, you've got uh, got an elevated heart rate. Just being able to be steady out there. Allie's been steady defensively. We've talked about that already. But one pitch at a time here if you're Louisville. Reagan Shockey lays down a great bunt and a missed throw there by Kylie Goff. And that ball is still rolling. Vanessa Miller grabs it. And Reagan Shockey now on third base. Yep, and it's also one pitch at a time if you're Arizona. You're not going to get, you know, three runs and a shot with no one on base. So being able to do what you do best, like they've said, let the game come to them. Shockey does a great job. She just lets this ball deaden. There really wasn't a play. That's where you have to know your speed, have to know what's going on around you. You can have that ball, give it a chance to roll foul, but really no reason to make that throw that requires the spin and really the unseen receiver at first base. It's Paige Dimmler. Played a singled into left field. Her first at bat in the fifth. Chops this. Foul. Dimmler looking to follow that same recipe, gets that same pitch. Oh, and two, the count to Dimmler. Just missing on that outside part of the plate. Goff tried. She tried to bring that back in. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be a hittable pitch. So I think, I think you're probably all good on that one. One and two. Swung on and fouled off. Reagan Shockey on third base for Arizona. That ball just running outside there. Evens up the count two and two to Paige Dimmler. Off speed is in for a backwards K and a little victory dance there by Alyssa Zabala. Well, she's been playing with that change up all night and sometimes it's been called for a strike. The majority of times it has not. And that's something that, you know, she's been working on, able to get the called strike there in the second out. Zabala's fourth strikeout of the game. That'll be Dakota Kennedy to the plate. Kennedy one for three this evening. Two outs now for the cards. The cards one out away from getting a big midweek win here. First pitch delivery misses from Zabala. Gonna be the sophomore from Sacramento, California. And off speed again, in for a strike. And generally speaking, that changeup is not one you want to hit, especially when the pitcher you're facing doesn't throw it often. You're not gonna sit on it, because you're not gonna see it every at bat. So when you can spot it for a strike, you get well ahead. Pitch misses. Two and one now to Dakota Kennedy. Oh, 
In on the hands, Allie Alexander making the grab as she charges in and Louisville takes down Arizona in a midweek matchup, Joanna. They did, 